Today is going to be special. Today we're doing something we have never done before. We are traveling all the way from New Jersey to Georgia to get fit for new wedges. We're going to meet up with our fitter, John, down there. We're told that he is the man when it comes to Vokey wedge fittings. And he is going to take us through the entire lineup of the brand new SM10 wedges. So all day long. just mm -hmm. getting down there to Georgia as quickly as we can. Super psyched for this one. The weather down there is supposed to be ideal. So this, this is gonna be a day. We'd like to welcome you to Atlanta. On behalf of your Boston and your Newark based flight attendants, we'd like to thank you so much for flying with United. We hope you've had an enjoyable flight with us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a wonderful day. John, we made it. You're here. Welcome to Georgia. Great to meet you, man. You as well. Yeah, nice we're coming. excited. Thank you. Absolutely. So you know we've done fittings before for wedges. Yep. They're a little different. I want to know why it's going to be a lot different down here. Well, we're going to we're going to get you guys really dialed in. I know yeah, you've gone through that before, but got a, maybe a few more uh, fitting tools that maybe you've haven't experienced in the past and stuff like that. A little bit more detail here, so we'll get you we'll get you dialed in for sure. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit your existing pitching wedge. So we're gonna kind of gap you out off of this. All right, so we're gonna kind of build off of that, right? Okay. So if this is kind of our, you know, typically a 140 club is what we like to play it, four to six degrees of loft increments, mm -hmm. it's gonna translate into 10 to 15 yards of gapping. Okay. Right, so we're in a 43, probably like a 48, 47, something like that. We'll, we'll kind of see what, what the carry number is. And you said you don't typically chip a lot with that club for the most part. The, the 46? Mm -hmm. The 46 I do not. Okay. Same with the 54, I okay. don't. Okay. I mean, my 60 is gonna be 80 and in, around the greens, bunkers, everything. Okay. So what the new SM10 lineup does for me as a fitter is gives me the most options I've ever had. So we have 25 different loft and grind options available. Profile shaping is different, right? Toes a little more symmetrical, a little square leading edge on the pitching wedges and gap wedges, a little less offset, a little smaller profile. And then as, that, uh, as we go up and loft into our sand and lob wedges, that CG is raised higher and more forward to help produce a lower, uh, spinnier ball flight. Our distance control is so much better now with our CG placement and stuff like that. Way more spin that we're getting. The profiles are beautiful. You know, it's uh, everything about SM10 is making my life a lot easier. So I'm gonna give you this, and then I'm actually gonna give you the same uh, shaft that, you've, that you're playing currently. Okay. Right, so we're gonna marry that up. This is where the fun starts to happen, right here. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so cool thing, uh, as you can see what I'm doing here that you maybe didn't experience last time you were fitting is we're using our SureFit system. So interchangeable heads, think kind of like how our metal woods are, yeah. right? It's a similar type system to that where I can independently change loft and lie from each other. So I can really kind of get you dialed in cool and then also that? I can change out shafts. There's the 46 with uh, your same shaft that you're playing currently in your pitching wedge and let's see how this feels. Wow, really good turf interaction there. That sounded excellent. Yeah, really good. Okay, good start, yeah. right? Oh, I'm liking That's it. I can feel it. It's <laughs> pretty crispy right there, bud. All right, so what I'm gonna do, those are really good, and those are carrying a little, almost a little too far. Honestly, it's pretty close to your pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. So maybe because of the efficiency now of the SM10, right, the different CG location, the shaft change, all these different things, maybe you're hitting a little more efficient. So maybe we need to dial back the loft now and give you a little more separation. So we started at 46, yep. right? That's three degrees, that's a little close. So I'm gonna take you to a 48 and see if that fits that number that we need. Okay. All right, let's try this and see if it feels a little better and hits more of the window, we're, or sorry, the distance we're looking for. It's pretty good there. Yeah. Same clean turf interaction there. Again, yep. same uh, bounce and grind as the last one. We're just changing loft here. Okay. Yeah, there you go, there good go. golf swing there. Feel kind of just like it flows a little bit better from your irons Absolutely, now. totally. That, that last shot, for example, that carried right out about 130. Perfect. Right, and yeah. that's that's what we need because yeah. you said kind of 140 with your pitching wedge, right? So like, okay, that's more, that's closer. And five degrees, Yeah. four to five typically works best from what I find. About 8,500 RPM of spin, that's great. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So that's good stopping power. That's translating to a landing angle of 49.8. That, and it, we actually saw it right yeah. out there. It's gonna hit and stop on a green and hold a green, but not balloon on you. Yeah. It's gonna get through the wind well. That's so what I that's want. uh 
that's money. So uh, as a fitter, one of the first things that we do is we, we do an interview process with the player, right? And I may spend five minutes, I, I may spend 10 minutes with that player, really seeing what they're looking to accomplish, learn what their strengths are in wedge play, what their weaknesses are, and anything they can, they can provide to me because we're kind of in this together, right? At the end of the day, I, I just want that player to play better golf. That's really what it's all about. So asking the right questions, the communication, it, it's, we joke around, it's, it's like a good marriage, right? You gotta, you gotta talk with people and, and really see, hey, what are, you, what are you trying to get out of this? Why are you here? And work with them to meet their goals. John, I'm excited to get into the gapping because I've been called out on it before. I do have a big gap in there. Okay. There is a method to the madness though. Fair enough, yeah. I yeah. have a reason, it doesn't mean it's a good reason, so you may want to change it. Okay. All of my irons were bent two degrees flat, and I love it. Awesome. You know, I tend to work the ball right to left, but sometimes overwork it. Okay. And we found that flattening just kind of helped it out a little bit. Okay. But then I go to a 48, which is a full swing club for me, 52, mm -hmm. 60. Okay. Now the reason I had a 54, um, I just found that I was constantly faced with a 100 yard full swing shot and I couldn't get a 54 there. Okay. Yeah. So I got the 52 and then 52 is like my Swiss army knife. Okay. I use it for full swing, 100 yard shot all the time, but little pitch shots, I'd rather hit a half shot with my 52 than a full with my 60 if that tells you anything. Love that. So the 52 is a Swiss army knife. 52 is like my favorite club that's, almost in the That's back. music to Vokes ears. He, 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 loves a, he loves a 52, he loves a 56, old school, you know, so uh, that's a great wedge. So, okay. Well, but that's the reason right now for the gap. It doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna stay there, but that's where my head's at. This is great because um, I'm a fan of maintaining all your strengths, right? <laughs> right. And, and it will just improve any weaknesses, but your strengths are your strengths, right? Yeah. So let's, let's cater around that best we can. Very nice. One thing that you were just talking about, right? You get a little too much right to left ball movement. Yes. All right. Well, in the gap wedge, the CG placement has been moved more towards center from the heel side. Should help some with that as well. And then we'll look at that, uh, excuse me, look at that lie angle and see if we can make, you know, some adjustments there, maybe two degrees flat as well to see if that flows better and gives you better dispersion. Generally speaking, do you find that the lie angles in wedges match the irons? you match them up or, or because of the nature of being a wedge, is it perform a little different that you don't need to? Great question. Um, yes. Uh, typically what you're in your irons is probably going to flow into your wedges, but it depends on how you use them green side, right? So there's times where we may be even a little flatter mm -hmm. in a lob wedge for a player because they use it out of the bunker and their hand placement is lower, you know, swing path is, is more shallow, whatever the case may be. Every now and then it's the opposite. It might get somebody a little bit more upright on how they chip and stuff like that. But typically it's either the same or a little flatter is yeah. what, what I've found in my experience. That's why you hit all the shots in the fitting, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So sure enough, you were, uh, your gapping's perfect. Again, 44 degree pitching wedge going to a 48 degree wedge. You were at 137 and 123. That's yeah. Textbook. Okay. There's the new one. Okay. Same LZ shaft that you're in. A little bit different shaping in SM10. Mm -hmm. Leading edge is a little uh, more square in the pitching wedge and gap wedges. The CG's been moved a little bit more towards center from the heel side. Take okay. some of that draw bias out. And then the uh, the toe area is a little bit more symmetrical compared to the past. You may notice that from a shaping standpoint there as well. Yeah. So let's see how it feels. Solid there. Okay, so from a number perspective, right, that one did launch a little higher, but, uh, you know, 128 yards there. All right, let me make a little tweak to it. Okay, see how this feels compared to the last one. Okay. Felt Pretty good. good there. Yeah. Let's say, a little lower. A little right? lower, yeah. yeah that, was, that, was, that was really solid. 125. Perfect. Yep, right where you need to be. So often I get the question, what is grind, right? What is bounce? And so I want to kind of clear that up a little bit for, for players. So when we're talking about grind, we're really talking about the shape of the sole and how that interacts with the turf. So all the different grinds, bounce is part of that. Bounce is actually just the angle that's created from the leading edge to the trailing edge and the angle of the ground. But that's part of the grind. So bounce 
camber, that kind of curvature this way, the sole width, all these different things make up the grind. And the reason it's called a grind is it literally came from grinding away these different shapes on a grinding wheel to create these different profiles and then how they interact with the turf differently based off you know, if you're more of a digger, if you're more shallow through the ball, whatever the case may be. And that's why we have so many different ones of them to, you know, be able to fit every type of swing out there. So on the next one, we're gonna build off of this, right? In our current setup, we've got some, some you know, bigger spacing and stuff like that. So you've got quite a bit of gap, know, knowing that we've got a 140 plus pitching wedge, 135, 140, and a 125 to 130 gap wedge. Mm -hmm. So if you've got like 110, 115 and you you're like oh okay i'm just gonna try to muscle it that that's it's probably gonna be a lot so let's find you a wedge that fills that gap easier from say 115 ease off it some all the way down to like 100 to 95 like and it. then we'll get into your lob wedge because that's a, for you does a lot of stuff right yeah use it kind of green side yeah. use it everywhere full swing all that so mm -hmm. we'll spend more time on that but let's see what works best for this next one okay so don't look, just swing. Okay. Tell me how it feels. Oh, yeah. A little different sound right away. A little different sound, that's for sure. There we go. That is pure. That's the one. So what we've done here is we've given you a 52, been at one degree weak mm -hmm. to 53. Anytime you bend a wedge strong or weak, that changes the bounce ratio one to one. So in this case, we had 12 degrees of bounce mm -hmm. at, at, uh, in a 52 one degree weak, so it's playing 53 with 13 degrees of bounce and a little fuller sole. So again, that's why it's getting through the ground a little bit better. Okay. And again, this is still the F grind for you because you use it primarily as kind of a gapping club. Right. Okay. So it, currently you've been using a 60 mm -hmm. and we've got our K grind here. How's this been for you? This, mm -hmm. I sleep with this club. Okay. I love it so much. Love it. <laughs> That's a great answer. Does that describe it? <laughs> that's pretty good. My, it says, my money, money says money club, right. so it must, it must be pretty good. all of my 60s for okay. years. My money club. Pretty all right, good. awesome. So in a wedge fitting, a good wedge fitter wants to maintain your strengths, mm -hmm. right? Because you love this club, but I want to improve weaknesses. So let's see if we can do something better while still keeping all the good things you like about this guy. Okay. All right, let's try this. This is a 50... Eight is what it says on the bottom of the club, but okay. we'll see from there. Let's hit it and, okay. and then we'll talk about it. There's that sound again. There's that number. There's that we're number. For, there's I that bet. sound. There's that feel. <laughs> One shot wonder. This is. I, I mean, maybe we'll we'll do it again. <laughs> maybe it's just a really good guess. I, I don't know. Might have been. I think Let's I'm starting to get the hang of this. <laughs> <laughs> so from a loft structure standpoint, right? We've got a 43 degree pitching wedge. We've got a 48 degree wedge. Mm -hmm. We've got a 52 bent to 53. Right. And we got a 58 degree wedge in your hands. Yeah. Five degrees. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, translates into really good gapping for you. Yeah. Ooh, hello. Great shot. So a lot of times people ask, when should I get fit? If you've had your wedges a while, right? After about 75 rounds, you're gonna to start to see a little bit of spin decay happen. After 125 rounds, it's gonna be pretty significant. So if you've had your wedges for two, three, four years, something like that, it's worth your time to go get fit and see what the new benefits of fresh grooves and a well-fit wedge can do for your wedge game. This next one, because you use it for so many different things, we're gonna try something obviously that's very close to what you're in now in SM10, mm -hmm. but maybe there's something better. Yeah. Let's find out. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna give you number one, and what I here this is gonna be a little bit of the blind test here, where yeah. I want you to see which one feels better. We'll look at numbers, we'll look at ball flight, all that stuff for the full swing, and then we'll work our way kind of greenside um, into in all those shots there, and then as well as when we get into your um, lob wedge. Okay. Number one. All right. Okay. So long, but all right. So that's number one. Okay. okay. See if two feels better than one. Okay. So 110, on, 110 on that last shot. So for this blind grind, we don't know what they are. We just know that they're different clubs and that's we're gonna right. go from there. That's right. Grind finds you. Yeah, good swing. A little higher again. Definitely higher. See how it's, uh, so the only difference I can tell you between those two yeah. is shaft. <laughs> so there you go. A little higher, like yeah. you said, a little bit different in launch. All like right, so need, now, need a little now bit more I'm, I'm going to introduce a whole nother variable. Okay. All right, number three. Okay. There's a method to the madness. <laughs> now we're going, now I'm about to 
go cr crazy off, off the reservation here with you. This is gonna be completely different. All right, so like you said before to me, this is your Swiss Army knife. So yes. You do a whole lot of things with this. Okay, swing this. Let's do the first uh, fuller swing shot first. Okay. Ooh, hello. I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that better. It still went a long way. Okay. I like I like it the went flight. a long way, right? Yeah. And but it was a much lower launch, better spin, better turf interaction. Hundred percent on all. I mean, I could hear it, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. We're on to something. There we go. Yeah, this is this is much more like how I'd like to see it. Again, similar type flight, better turf interaction. All of the above. Okay, all of the above. I love hearing that. All right, so let's go. Let's go to this left pin, right, which is right at about 80 yards. When we get to this, that, that's I got to make sure this. It's good on the full swing, but it might not be as good here. This is why we're still we're still trying to figure out what grind. Not bad. It is true though. I feel like when I'm taking a little bit off of it, it just feels like it changed a little bit on me. Okay. So maybe going a maybe little more weight. So let's try the shaft. Okay. And then I've got so I've got one more grind shaft. that I want you to hit. Okay. On the uh, on the partial swings, I think is where weight can come into play a little more. Yeah. All right. So that's I'm like eh, you don't have as much control over this just now. Like feel shots. Yep. Versus just taking a full swing. That's right. You know. That's right. That's why typically wedge shafts are a little heavier. I told you there's a method to the madness. There's a method to the math. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go with that 80 shot. Yep. That felt better. Hello. Much better. It felt much more like a feel shot to Ooh, me. Ooh, that was great. There yeah. you go. So I think we just proved the point of the shaft. So yes, that was it just gave you a little change. bit more distance on the fuller swing shot, but when we started getting those partial swing shots, you didn't have as much control of it because it was a little too light and too soft for mm. you, right? So a little heavier here gave you more control. Now I want to go try one more grind just to see, okay? This Why is not? pretty good. Let's get weird. Why not, right? <laughs> We're here. Let's do it. Okay. Are we still hitting the uh, like 80? Yeah, so I want you to go around the world again. I want you to go to that uh, kind of 9,500, that 100 yard shot again. Yep. And then, uh, and then back down to the um, 80 yard shot. Got it. But we know now, no more variables of shaft. We found your shaft. Got it. We're just looking at grind now. Dialing it in. That's right. That might be the best sound I've heard. Yeah, it sounded good. And it went through the turf like nothing. Oh yeah, all that. <laughs> so much better, I just love the way right? it goes through the turf. Okay, so you ready now? Jeez. What are we? We're a little more shallow through yes. it, right? Come a little bit more from the inside. So we flattened the wedge, yes. okay? That's one thing. The very first one that you hit was what you've been playing, a 5208F, okay? Yep. It's okay. Yeah. The second one was a little better, right? It was a 54 bent to 53. Okay. It was an M grind. And it was pretty good, but on those partial swing shots, you, you actually dug it a little too much, right? Mm -hmm. The sweet spot, the one in your hands, 54 bent to 53, is an S grind. So we've gotten a little more narrow sole, mm -hmm. right? Some trailing edge relief, so now, because this is your Swiss Army knife, I've given you two things. I've given you a little bit more trailing edge and heels where you can uh, manipulate club face when you need to greenside more. Yeah. Helped you on the full swing shot, right? And then also we've um, improved that gapping by going to 53, so a little more loft greenside probably give you a touch more spin too. Right. All right, good let's to work have our options. way greenside. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> options are good. When we're fitting wedges, especially the grinds, we do uh, this process called the blind grind test. and. It's kind of like going to the eye doctor a little bit where you're gonna see a, and hit a bunch of different of the grinds. And the reason we do that is because they're gonna interact differently with the turf. The ball's gonna come out in different windows, right? So finding the right one, that, that process is so very important to, to determine what's gonna be the best one. And then we kind of do it over again, right? And hit it in different scenarios because one grind may be beneficial for you here, but maybe it's not quite as good as the other one in the bunker. So going through that process really helps us eliminate those that really aren't good for you and those that are great for you. So it's, it's, a, it's a pivotal part of getting fit for wedges. So we've got some different grinds here. Okay. Um, something in here maybe really close to what you're playing, but yeah. this is again where the, the grind kind of finds you and you'll feel hopefully one or two of them like, wow, these feel pretty easy. And if we can narrow it down to a couple, great. And then we'll try them out of the bunker and stuff like that. So process of elimination. So got it. Okay. okay. 
So let's put them through the ringer. There we go. All right. Number one. Mmm. One felt really clean. Good start. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, do we have to hit the others? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna say is number one was pretty good. Yeah. We have a, a new leader in the clubhouse. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, you pick one, anyone. Okay, truly guy. blind, won't even look. That's it. Okay. A little clippier, a little bit. Sounded a little clicky, maybe yeah. a little blow. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> kind of bounced into yeah, it. About, yeah, a little behind it. And okay. It didn't feel as clean as that last one. What? You're working too hard. Yeah. Guess what? Make the wor wedge work for me. That one's gone. See ya. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Don't care. All right. All these are used by the best players in the world. So they're all good. It's just what's right for you. Not bad. Not bad. Forgiving for not, I didn't say it was a perfect shot. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. That was clean. Still kind of like in one better. Okay. So the optimal place to hit a wedge is between grooves two and five. Okay. We're a little high up on the face up there mm -hmm. on some of these marks, but they're centered. They're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can do better though. So we'll, we'll put this, we'll call this the second best so far. Okay. All right. There we go. Mm-hmm. Good. That's, but same yeah. thing. Yeah. Just not quite as friendly. Like it wasn't bad. That's it. Okay. Yeah, not bad. I just don't feel like I have as much control with it. Okay. So I threw in some of our hand ground stuff for fun, right? Okay. So the one, the one that actually you like, okay, so far is the S grind. The other one that you liked is actually the S grind. It just has heel relief. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty uh, yeah. obvious so this the is, is the one. This is just some, something that uh, we do through our, through hand ground and wedge works and, and what um, Aaron and Shane do out on tour and stuff like that sometimes. We'll, we'll, we'll give us some additional polishing, right? Yeah. So a little bit more relief here so you can open it up easier, something like that. But in terms of this shot, the way you're playing it, they're the same club. All right, so. In conclusion, after today's fitting with Mike, right, we've got a 48 degree gap wedge, right, that kind of gaps him out a little bit better now with his same uh, iron shaft that he's using. So nip on 120 there. Then in the other two, we jump shafts to the S200, right, our, our kind of standard wedge shaft that we offered. We've got a 5212F bent to 53. And then we've got a 5814K. Uh, so Good gapping across the board now. Some good greenside stuff with it. A little bit of a change. Obviously going from a 60 to a 58, but he found that, hey, not a big deal. I can make that work. All day long. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Ooh, nippy. Hello. Look at that. that was pretty good. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was good. And then Frank, for you, we ended up in a 48 degree gap wedge as well. Same thing, went with the same shaft in your irons, the Project X LZ55, but we found that didn't work quite as good in the other two for you, so we jumped up and weighed again to that same dynamic gold wedge shaft again. So we went from a 52 to now a 5410S bent to 53, and then we went to a 6010S uh, bent to 59. So a little bit of loft change, some grind changes, uh, quite, quite a few grind changes for you. Um, but as you saw, kind of maintain all your strings in the bunker and improved all the versatility green side for you a little bit more and as well as your distance control. So good job. Hard to beat that. <laughs> I love it.